All right, so I'm going to be talking today about inbound marketing and content marketing and how you can build your online presence to help sell more systems and uh, become sort of a content leader in your area. So this title slide here is actually uh, the finishlinks.com website traffic. Uh, we, you know, it goes back even further than that, but in 2013 there, we actually redesigned our website and reorganized everything and sort of started making a new commitment to building good links related content. And as you can see, every year uh, we're going up and up and then those big jumps there are actually spring track season, which just gets insane in the office and the poor uh, support and sales and production guys are just running a mile a minute, but we love it. And so the goal here is to show you why your website, your business and service website, uh, is going to be your most important online asset. And the next is going to it's going to be why Google or whatever search engine in your area is very very important. Next, I'm going to show you why content marketing works, and I promise I will show you. And finally, I'm going to try to motivate you to start growing your own online brand. And I know that there's various level of expertise here, and this may be hit or miss. Some of you guys maybe don't manage your website personally, but the goal here is to hopefully bring some ideas back to the rest of your team as well, so that maybe you can have some action items and say, here are a couple things we need to start doing, because I think we'll bring in some more money for business. All right, so first of all, it's going to be what is inbound in content marketing. And this is, I'm very much nerding out right now. I'm a, I'm a big internet marketing guy, so a lot of this might be completely new and some others that um, you maybe have heard of before. But I'm going to show you some examples of how inbound and content marketing work and various ways to do it. And then I'm going to give you sort of an example of how FinishLinks does it, and then we're going to be sort of the case study to show you uh, how and why it works. And then I'm going to give you some ideas on to how to leverage content in inbound marketing uh, with your own business as well. All right, so what is inbound marketing? You can see here, this is sort of a, a niche term that was come up, uh, come up with by a marketing software company out of Boston called HubSpot. They're a public trade company now, and they do very well, and they've done very well um, building this idea that if you build good quality, high quality educational content, you don't have to blast out your message to everyone in the world. People will start finding you and finding your brand. And there's sort of this combination of blogging, writing blog posts about news events, uh, good high quality landing pages on your website. Uh, CRM, I don't know if people are familiar with that, but that's a customer relationship management system. It's essentially how you're managing your contacts and your leads, and then following up with them to say, okay, maybe you learn about a venue, you're looking for a new system, when are you going to follow up and decide, okay, hey, are you guys ready to make the sale? And then there's a few other pieces as well, web pages, email marketing, uh, social media, and then sort of tracking everything with Google Analytics or any sort of analytics to see, um, are you growing, where are people coming from, et cetera. Uh, all right, so I, I like this quote here just because um, this is created by people that were even smarter than me, and I might as well just read it verbatim to you. So inbound marketing focuses on attracting customers through relevant and helpful content and adding value at every stage in your customer's buying journey. With inbound marketing, uh, potential customers find you through channels like blogs, search engines, and social media. And the idea here is that not everyone knows they want to use your timing service or knows that they want to use the finish link system. But the idea is that you start with strangers who maybe are researching the option. Maybe they just came to the, 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 um, join the venue, just join your the federation, and the idea is that you're bringing them down the sales funnel by gradually introducing them to more content that's relevant to them. And so the key here with inbound marketing is, this is a, a juxtaposed with outbound marketing, which is sort of the traditional way of advertising and pushing your message out. Inbound is about attracting people to you. So instead of buying ads, email lists, or cold calling, inbound marketing focuses on creating educational content that pulls people to you. And the idea is that, um, you know, it's not necessarily passive, but what happens is that you're incrementally building content that then compounds. So over time, you have this beautiful library of information that when someone says, okay, let's see, timing system, Germany, and maybe they search for that in their, in their own language, 
you want to show up first in Google. So here are just a few examples of outbound, which is the traditional way of marketing, versus inbound. So an outbound message method would just be an example of a TV ad maybe you'd see during a, a sporting event. The inbound method would be creating a YouTube video that's educational that when they need the service or need to learn about something, you show up first and your content shows up. Then instead of print ads, which would be the sort of outbound method, you're creating a blog with news events and relevant topics so that you know, you're know you not showing up in their magazine when they're trying to read about football. Instead, when they're looking for information about their topic, your blog shows up and your website shows up. And then cold calling, of course, is another popular one, and it's not something that we're saying get rid of entirely, but the idea is that creating content instead will have people cold calling you, and that makes your lives act a lot easier. And this is kind of a beautiful uh, stat here that I liked. Um, companies who use inbound marketing have 60% lower cost per lead than companies solely relying on outbound. The idea is that you're building this library of content and it's cheaper for you to find new customers, new venues, and new people uh, to use your stuff. So there's a, a benefit there for sure. All right, so there's a few different steps here. The idea is that you're starting with someone who maybe doesn't quite understand your product or service. And starting here on the left, they're complete strangers. So first you're gonna try to attract strangers to find um, the content that you care about in your niche. So you're creating things like blogs, um, photos, videos, a white paper, for instance. So like maybe it's uh, IAAF regulations in Finland, and you know maybe it's not something that it's very different in Finland. But the idea is that you can write it in your native language, and then someone searching for it, uh, your content shows up first, and suddenly Refline is the market leader in IAAF uh, regulations. So you're sort of building credibility there. Um, and then there's also uh, building keyword rich pages. So um, our, your website should be filled with terms and variations of the words that people are searching for. Uh, and then you're gonna use uh, social media to then help build a community around that. So uh, whether it's timers, officials, uh, customers, partners, you wanna engage with people in your region to then uh, you know, have an active community who will then Engage and hopefully purchase down the line. <laughs> the next step is you're then going to try to convert those casual visitors into leads or eventually sales. So um, once you have this sort of database of customers who are checking back in your in with your content, maybe they're reading about IAAF, they're learning about timing system options, you then set up your website to not just give them information, but to then capture their personal information so that you can follow up later. So instead of just reading your website, they're submitting their contact for more information, then you reach out and say, hey, I, I see that you're interested in uh, potentially timing events uh, in X country, uh, how can we help? And suddenly right there, someone who just visited casually turns into a potential customer, and that's huge. Uh, and then the other two points are then closing those leads and then delighting those customers. We're just simply not gonna have enough time to get to that. I, I imagine most of you guys excel at that anyway, so. We're really going to focus on the first two parts, which is attracting and converting people who are visiting your content. So. All right, so then content marketing specifically is a, is a little piece of inbound, which is the idea that you're building quality content and bringing people to you. So this is not my graphic, but essentially step one is creating some quality content in your niche and especially in your language as well if you're um, going from a different area. The next step is going to be promoting it. So, sure, you have a brilliant blog post, but if no one's reading it, it doesn't really help you, does it? Uh, then step three is going to be converting those visitors uh, into potential meetings, phone calls, uh, bids, quotes, etc. And then finally, down the line, you're going to uh, close it and, and get paid, which we all like to do as well. All right, so content marketing is, is sort of in the essential part of inbound where you're attracting and converting people. So I, I kind of already mentioned this before, but so step one is going to be create your content that builds, uh, that attracts buyers. Uh, step two is going to be promoting it, so you're sharing it and building a following. Step three is then converting those people into leads and customers. Uh, and then the fourth step is a little bit trickier. You're kind of 
keeping track of your content and optimizing the things that work well. So if you know that a video seems to be driving a lot of traffic to you or driving a lot of leads, or a white paper or something like that, a certain page on the website, you use that and then build more off of that and build more winning content that can drive more leads. All right, so here are just some of the benefits. So I mean, you guys follow me essentially that you just keep sort of building content to then uh, drive people to you, if that makes sense. Um, I think that there are a lot of core benefits other than just website traffic that I just want to be clear. Um, first of all, when you build quality content, you are creating brand awareness for your company, uh, for your, the timing system, for finish links, for your support in general. Uh, the next is you're attracting visitors. So it's when there's maybe a major event in the area, maybe there's a new world record that just happened at an event. You can create a blog post around that and then attract new people that perhaps hadn't heard of your company before. They say, oh, interesting. Uh, this company timed it. They, they, use a finishing timing system, and that's the new world record. That's very interesting. Suddenly you have 10, 100, 1,000 more people that have heard of your company, your business, and the system that you use. And that's great because down the line, they can turn into customers. Um, and then you're also adding value. So when you create good quality content, uh, people trust what you have to say, and you become a market leader for them, and they want to come back for more information, especially when they're uh, and then you're building trust around that as well, which is very related. And then the screenshot below is just some of the blog posts that uh, we've been posting lately. You know, not everything is just a straight lead generation type machine. We have tech support, we have year-end review, we have introducing new team members. The idea is that you're keeping people engaged and uh, having them follow up and say, and sort of follow along with the brand as well. All right, a few more uh, benefits here. So. The next one is going to be organic growth. So the more content that you build around your website, your social media, your videos, that's going to then just sort of start compounding and then build a little bit more traffic over time. You get more people visiting your website, more people potentially submitting uh, contact forms, and you're growing your contact list. And then the, another one, like I mentioned before, is going to be this cheap acquisition cost, where instead of paying thousands of dollars to show up in an ad somewhere, suddenly you're going to be having people come to you for your expertise because of that, and that's going to be a lot cheaper for you. And then there's those last two steps where you're converting sales into like customers. So um, it's not just creating content for new people, but then your customers, your timers, your venues, you want to have other pieces of content to then keep them happy, keep them knowledgeable, and then keep them engaged as well. Uh, then here's just a quick example of that's going to be the support landing page, which, of course, you guys are all experts, so you've never had to check our tech support pages at all, I'm sure, but that's what that looks like. And then we have uh, just a little snippet of our YouTube channel as well, which, um, as some of you guys mentioned, we've really been trying the past few years to um, put up a lot of video content because people seem to love it. So. All right, so the question is, does content marketing work? And I would say, resoundingly, yes. Uh, here's a good stat that 50 per so 50 percent, 57% of B2B buyers uh, make a final decision on a sale before ever speaking with you. So the idea is that 50%, 57% of people already know they want some system without ever talking to them on the phone. And that's, that should scare you a little bit because the idea is that they could be going to your competitor without you ever having a chance to make your pitch. And that's why giving them research online to consume and make a quality decision helps you a lot. And content marketing costs 62% less than outbound marketing and then generates three times the leads. So the more landing pages you have out there on the internet, the more engaged community you have, uh, the more leads you're gonna generate because of that. And that's, you know, every, every little piece of content, no matter um, how easy it is to put up, that's another potential opportunity to convert someone. Uh, companies with blogs generate 55% more web visitors. Again, take these with a grain of salt, but these are just some studies. So, if you have a, a company blog where you're sharing news, updates, photos, uh, major events, uh, major world records, whatever, you're going to get 55%, you know, up to, you know, more visitors visiting your website. 
Again, that's great for your brand. And you're also, from that, getting more inbound links and more Google pages links, so there's more potential there as well. Companies with blogs generate 126% more leads than those without. So the idea that you're just creating this content is suddenly bringing in more people and more leads, and that's a great thing. And conversion rates are six times higher with content marketing, which is you know about 3% versus a half percent. So the idea is that one, uh, three out of every 100 visitors suddenly turn into a lead versus a half of every, every, every 100. That, that matters for sure. OK, and I think this is a really important slide here. This is something I did touch on in, in 2012 as well. Uh, the importance of Google search results. And again, this is going to vary. Maybe, maybe your country isn't a big Google. Maybe you have Yandex or something like that. But the top Google result is going to take 20% and more than 20% of the clicks. So if someone's searching on a topic, 20% of the people are clicking on that first link, no matter what. So the idea is, in your country, if someone's searching for um, best timing system in Germany, you want your web link to show up first, because it's likely that they're going to click on you. And then, of course, it goes increasingly down with percentages, except that it's kind of funny that number 10 jumps, because I think it's the idea that they scroll the bottom of the page, they still have been found what they want, and they're just like, well, I guess I'll give that last one a try so I don't have to click the next page, but whatever. Right. So next, we're gonna go through those four steps just really quickly, just to give you some ideas. Um, so the first one's gonna be blogging. So this is the idea that you're creating regular content updates, um, and you're targeting specific niches. So this is gonna vary for everyone depending on your sport, but so maybe you're targeting clubs, schools, federations, a, a builder-specific uh, post, time and companies, other experts. Uh, the next one's gonna be videos. So the videos are great because they're shareable uh, and they're really engaging. Like Wilson mentioned, people don't love reading in general. So if you can give them a great video showing off what your tech setup was like at the major championship meet, that's something that people who are interested in would love to see. And that's the same goes for photos as well. But then there's things like product demos, new features, tech support, tips and tricks, anything that you can create that adds value to your current customers or potential customers is a win for sure. And then the third one's landing pages. So this is a sort of a, a niche term where essentially if you're creating a web page, you want your goal of your web page is something. So a landing page is the idea that you're creating a web page targeted at someone, and the goal is to get them to submit a form. So these are a couple examples of, this is the athletics timing page, not, not track and field athletics, so the goal is international here. So I'm gonna go over the logistics of it a little bit later, but the idea is that we want someone to land on this page and submit, it, submit a contact form for more information. And the same goes, we have those for every single sport. And that's something you guys can do as well in your own languages. Some more types of content, photos and animated GIFs. Uh, I apologize that I say GIF instead of GIF, but um, I think that the point still stands. People love interesting, shareable, funny things to um, share with their, their communities. Another one is actually building online communities yourself. So Fred Patton, for instance, has uh, a, how long has your forum been up and running? <laughs> so he, so uh, he's had a, a timing forum up for 20 plus years. There's now a Timers Talk Facebook group. And actually, I, I, I'm sorry that Jernay recently left, but uh, he started a European Timers Talk Facebook group as well. So the idea is that you're um, starting a community of timers in your niche so that you can then share ideas and then potentially push out relevant information to them as well. All right, then step two is promoting your content. And this is tricky, obviously, um, but that's where social media really shines. So um, I think that it should be understood that you should be investing in social media. You, should, you guys should all have a page for your timing company or for your sales company. Uh, and then you should try to be relatively active on it and grow a following because that's gonna be a free tool that you guys have to not only promote your events and yourself, but also generate sales um, when people are searching. So let's say there's a big uh, athletics championship and you're timing it. Um, if you can use uh, something like Instagram, for instance, to post some behind the scenes photos at the event, 
people see your hashtag, they see that your company is associated with it, and again, there are suddenly tens, hundreds, thousands more people that understand that your company is involved and you're a market leader there. So, uh, and then email marketing is a huge one as well. We've had uh, tremendous success in the U.S. Uh, building email lists uh, and then blasting out messages to uh, segmented lists by high school, by college, by regions, etc. And then brand partnerships. So it's not just um, blasting out people to uh, blasting out messages to people that you know, but then also finding other influencers in your sport, whether it's major athletes, etc. Uh, sales partners connect with us on it as well, so we love resharing your images. Uh, and then local federations try to connect with them as well. And then, all right, so then I got a couple uh, pictures here. We got Paul Castell looking nice and fit, showing off his link stack there. The, the link community love that picture, because they're like, wow, I didn't even know you could have four cameras in one place. And I believe this is Raja, right? Is, is Raja here? Somewhere? He's not publishing his truck. Yeah, all right. So then, uh, that's a photo from Raja. And then this is uh, Paul Smith from the UK. They, this, they timed this event. Uh, I, I don't know if you'd call it an event, but basically it's a world land speed record. Is that where's Paul? Right? Land? Uh, it's a model of a jetpack. So this, this guy rode a jetpack <laughs> over a lake and then created a new Guinness World Record around it. And then they, they filmed it for a TV station, and then we got these, these hilarious and beautiful photo finish pictures of a guy in a jetpack. And that's something I've never seen before. And people, other finish links timers, whether they're a high school athletic director or just some coach, they love seeing that stuff. It's funny, it's interesting, and it's novel. And, and again, that's people that, um, when they see interesting things, they want to reshare and, and promote your brand for free. And that's something you need to take all right, and then the next two are going to be uh, search engine optimization. That's SEO. That's the idea that um, you are creating content that's readable for not only humans, but Google and the robots as well. So you're using good quality keywords. You're targeting your country, your city. You're saying if you are a athletics timing company in Germany, then you say, okay, German athletics timing, right in the title. You need to... Uh, be very specific with how you word things because uh, that helps drive more quality traffic to your website with people who are searching for it. And then going viral, that's sort of the, the dream where you, you upload some perfect image and then it gets shared millions of times. The, the fact is that's not really gonna happen, but you can go a little mini viral with it. And the idea is that maybe you have a funny post or image that gets shared with 2,000 people in your country. Suddenly, again, that's more eyeballs on you. Uh, and then the last one's going to be paid advertising. That's a little bit more niche. I think we're running out of time. But um, the idea is you can pay to have your website link show up at the top of the results there. Uh, and that's tricky. If you want to talk to me about that later, uh, we certainly can. All right, step three is then converting your leads. So um, once people are on your site, how do you then get them to submit a contact form? So, the idea is you're segmenting your traffic by the sport or needs. You don't want to have every single potential system on one single page. When someone Googles cycling timing in X country, you want them just to go to the cycling page and only give the relevant cycling material. Using headlines, uh, highlighting key features and benefits, uh, building trust with social proof, which is sort of the event logos there. Clear call to action buttons, that's a huge one as well. So people, um, they want to be told what to do. You need to guide them. If you want them to do something, you create a nice big that button there that convinces them they want to click and request a quote. And you vary that depending on what you want the visitor to do. And here's an example. We just give them several opportunities. They can fill out a side form there. They can click the button there. And then I believe there's one, at least another one down there as well. They can click. All right, so we're not perfect, um, and we're a, we're a small company, uh, relatively a small team, but we do our best to sort of follow those principles to then generate more leads. So we redesigned the website in 2013. Um, we now have 72 products, 500 plus pages, uh, and then it's also syndicated in uh, Google Translate in, in 20 plus languages. It's, it's not all perfect, but um, it, it does help. Um, 
generate more leads outside of the U.S. So, so here's an important one that 65% of our web traffic is coming from search engines. That means, uh, so about 21% of people type in finishlinks.com directly, but 65% are searching Google for some relevant term that we show up for. And the idea that you know, almost three quarters of your traffic is coming from search engines, that's something you need to respect and appreciate, and then uh, sort of continue to then promote that so more people can find you when they're searching Google. Let's see. Okay, so I mentioned this before, but you wanna build sort of quality content that people search for. So you don't just put up a, a page just that has all your information there. What you're trying to do is solve a, a question, answer a question or solve a problem that people are looking for already. So if you have a keyword, so one of the interesting ones, for instance, is uh, this fully automatic timing page. This is something that we didn't have before, but when I Googled fully automatic timing in the US, uh, Wikipedia was the first result, and that really, really made me angry. So we try to come up with this like idea to beat Wikipedia, and the idea is that uh, you create what's called like a 10x page, which is essentially you throw in every single question that people might have about fully automatic timing, and the goal is to hopefully beat up Wikipedia, which as you can see from there, we finally did. And that, that what is fully automatic timing page is still a big traffic source for us because there's a lot of people who don't, again, they're, they're not familiar with the industry in general, but they think, oh God, my federation needs a fully automatic timing system. I don't know what the heck it is. Let's figure it out what's fully automatic timing. Suddenly, they're on the finish links page, and that's good for us. That's another potential move there. Um, and then, so, so relevant for you guys would be use keyword variations across the site that people are searching for. So uh, did some very hardcore research trying to find uh, other language variations. So Sistemos de Chronometrage, does that sound right, Wilson? Uh, so basically, you're targeting things in your language that people are searching for in your niche. <laughs> does the German look right, Armed, or close enough? <laughs> uh, so you want to use those keyword variations on your page to then uh, get that traffic that might be relevant to you. So here's a landing page that actually Lauren built using those sort of best practices. And I just want to give you this sort of the anatomy of a good landing page. So uh, we use this for our US email campaigns, and what happens is that uh, the way that the stats work out is that at least 10 to 11 percent of people visit this page, submit a form, and that's a, a fantastic conversion rate. So first of all, we have a, a keyword rich headline up there. We know it's relevant to what they're searching for or wanting. Um, first of all, like Ed mentioned, it's everything you need, and that's the idea that a package can solve all of your problems. Uh, and then it's NFHS certified fully automatic timing, so that's going to be the local high school federation there, so they know, okay, this is approved with the federation, I know it's going to work. Uh, then we have a video there that's going to show uh, basically how to capture it. That, that's something that uh, it's sort of easing, easing them into what fully automatic timing is and giving them a quick demo so then they can learn a little bit more about it and say, okay, this, this logically makes sense to me. Uh, and then you're showing them nice big pictures and the diagrams. And again, that, that's what Ed talked about where you're showing the variation. You can start very simple or go up to the MVP there um, and then if they got all the information they need, boom, send them right to the contact form, they submit more information, and then, again, that's why 10 to 11% of people who land on this are, are asking for more information. So it, that's sort of the dream of, you wanna have this page that's just throwing new people right to your inbox. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here. I had, I, I created about a million slides, but. Uh... Okay, another one I think that's gonna be an easy one is, using humor, memes, and images to uh, sort of get your brand out there. You know, it's not necessarily hardcore FAT type knowledge. But what happens is that this is super shareable stuff. So if there's something interesting that's happening in your region, uh, this can this is the type of content that can get hundreds or thousands of shares. So and, you know, I'm sure you guys are familiar. These are some of our just April Fool's posts. Um, you know, we're not, we're not getting necessarily leads from this, but we know that you guys love this in the US time. So umbrella links, this, does not exist, but I thought that would be a novel idea. Some of our fake Instagram filters, I don't think, uh, I asked Doug about that, but he said uh, maybe next year, so I got my fingers crossed. Um, the, uh, let's see, 
<laughs> shocking people that get too close to your camera, which we'd all love. Uh, and then there's some other some other stuff down there as well. So uh, another huge one is support demo videos. So uh, we work really hard to create videos, and I think that's something that uh, if you care about the timing community in your area, there's a lot of value there for uh, for you as well. So as of now, we have 115 YouTube videos, and we got 37,000 views last year. And uh, you know, even if you can start hitting a fraction of that, you're engaging the timing community and the racing community area, and that's, again, more potential leads. All right, and here's an example of just, uh, if you're tracking the conversion rates on your website, you can see, so 6% of people who visit the horse racing site submit a form, and that's good. But then it, it shows that there's room for improvement for us, maybe on rowing and motorsports, that uh, Matt needs to get back to work on Monday and improve that motorsports conversion rate to get that maybe up closer to four. So I uh, get some homework to do for sure. All right, one second here. Hey, okay. So the question is, who cares, right? I threw in some football there for the Europeans. I thought you guys would appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so and then here's sort of the, the crux of the, of the presentation here. I know we're, we're running into that time, but. So here is the uh, website statistics for the, so going back to 2011. Um, in the past year, we had 11% uh, more page views, 17% more unique visits, which is a little bit different metric. Uh, we had uh, 3,400 form submissions, that's up 12%, and then our conversion rate dropped a teeny bit, which we can just ignore that. But So back in 2011, um, we had 1,200 people submit website forms. This year, we're up to, or as of 2017, 3,400. So the idea is that we're creating this library of useful content that's then generating more leads over time, and then you're creating this Google-friendly content that drives people to you. So yes, we're still doing the traditional outbound methods, but suddenly we have this quote-unquote passive type system that's driving leads to you. And I think that's huge, that makes your job a lot easier selling when people say, hi, I need a time assistance for my venue, can you help me? So, can you leverage it? Absolutely, there's some more football for you guys. All right, so, uh, some, some quick tips, so we'll give me uh, three more minutes here. So, uh, one is gonna be invest in your website design and upkeep. So, uh, if you're not currently worrying about the website, uh, make a commitment to, to then start doing that. Next is gonna be commit to blogging and content updates. Every time you have an interesting event, throw together 250 words, throw up a picture, get it out there onto your social media channels and, and get some people interested. Uh, grow your social media channels, so get, get new followers, post new interesting uh, photos and make an investment in that. Uh, then it's gonna be email marketing contact lists, so find federations, find customers, find past leads and start building that list. And then next is be the sports timing leader in your region. So when people look up sports timing in X country, you want to show up first. I actually just wanted to call out HS Sports. I think that HS does a really nice job. Uh, they list all the full package diagrams, and I think I appreciate that because uh, it's something that we would love to see all the partners do, and uh, it was great, great to see. So. Actually, your channels. We have a few more there. Thanks to the question display. Uh, we got Sylvan's uh, skating there. Okay, so then my last slide here is what here are 10 ideas that you can start next week to, to do a better job with your content marketing. So, one would be capture and log behind the scenes photos from your next event. Whatever your next event is, take some photos, put up um, uh, you know, a quick description, and let people see behind the scenes. Two would be have update your website with all the events you've timed in the past two years. That shows uh, that you're a quality timer with a lot of business that people trust, and I think that's that's going to be relevant to the people that are visiting. Three, create a Facebook album of past events and finishing captures. That's again adding quality content up there on your social channels. That's going to get you shares, and that's going to get um, more engagement on your page. Four, update your website with diagrams with the latest finishing packages. So um, we have all the diagrams up on the website, but feel free to then email us directly if you can't grab them, we can get you copies of everything across all sports. 
Uh, five is going to be create a contact list of all the major clubs and venues in your region. And that's going to take a little bit of hustle, but that's going to yield you new sales and leads down the line. Six is going to be audit your website content to improve titles, keywords, and contact buttons. So you're going to follow the best practices to then uh, nudge visitors to do what you want. So uh, you want to show up a little bit better on search engines, and you want the visitors to then submit a contact form to you. Seven, download the latest photos, brochures, and quick start badges from the latest website. So you want to make sure your, your content's up to date, and then if you need to translate that as well, that's something to consider. Uh, so then eight could be translate two new documents into a local language. You can bang that out next week for sure, and if you need some ideas, uh, shoot us an email after this. Nine, create a, a list of blog or video ideas that are relevant to your niche. So uh, maybe you're not exactly sure what to post, but you want to make a commitment. Come up with some ideas that you think people might like and, and get them out there and just start thinking about it. And then 10 would be add live results to your website uh, and discuss this option with resellers. It's not something that I'm particularly confident in, but there's people here that have phenomenal live results systems. And the idea is that you can add links branding, venue branding, and company branding to these live results that can generate tens of thousands or even millions of views. Uh, and that's free advertising. All right, I'll, uh, I'll stop it right there. Is there any uh, questions or comments before we go to lunch? Sure. Just one quick one. Uh, you had a slide uh, talking about inbound uh, for one class. Yep. Uh, did you have a sense of, you know, for a way to track uh, how much of what quality those, those leads were? Because, again, we all get the you know, same email where it's you know, somebody just general kind of Spanish stuff. So the idea that Sure, so Jason's wondering if there's a way to monitor the quality of the leads that are coming in. And I think that's gonna be a step that falls into your CRM system where you're lead scoring, quote unquote, right? So you can see um, what's the likelihood that the lead's gonna get converted into a customer. That's not something that our system handles at the moment. So essentially we're just tracking the raw leads and some of them are just a text or request saying, hey, my button doesn't work or something, you know? But um, so that's going to be a little bit more advanced, but a CRM system, I think, will handle that. So. Anyone else? Questions? All right, appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to my uh, dirty presentation. So let's enjoy some lunch, yeah?